allows you to run queries, analyze, and visualize large-scale data with ease. And for those of you who want to automate queries, I have good news. In this video, we are going to show you how you can use BigQuery scheduling query feature to run the queries anytime or run a particular query on a recurring basis, for example, to automate reporting. To begin with, let's look at some prerequisites. First, enable the following APIs, BigQuery API for your project and BigQuery Data Transfer Service API. Next, ensure the users are granted with the appropriate Identity and Access Management or IAM permissions to perform the tasks. To create the transfer, you must have BigQuery.Transfers.Update permission or both the BigQuery.Jobs.Create and BigQuery.Transfers.Get permissions. To run a scheduled query, you must have the BigQuery.Jobs.Create permission for the project where the query will be run and BigQuery.Datasets.Update permission on the target dataset. To delete a scheduled query, you must have BigQuery.Transfers.Update permission. Here's a useful tip. Remember that the predefined IAM role BigQuery.Admin comes with all the permissions required for you to schedule and modify queries. Alright, let's now look at how to set up scheduled queries on Google Cloud Console. Go to the BigQuery page. Run the query that you would like to schedule and verify the results. In our example, we have verified the following query. When you are satisfied with your results, click Schedule and Create New Scheduled Query option. For name for the scheduled query, enter a name, for example, My Scheduled Query. Next, in the Schedule options, the query is configured to run every day by default. However, you can modify the frequency to weekly, monthly, custom or on-demand. Note the on-demand option allows you to run the query whenever you want to run it at a later time. For a custom schedule, use a cron-like time specification. We will retain the default option that is to run the query daily. You can modify these settings to start and end the query at specific times based on your needs. Next, set a destination table for query results. Choose the right destination data set for the data set name. Enter the name of the destination table in the table name. Before setting the destination table partitioning field, let's learn about the partitioning options supported. BigQuery has two types of table partitioning for scheduled query destination tables. Tables partitioned by ingestion time. These tables are partitioned based on the scheduled query's runtime. Leave the destination table partitioning field blank and indicate the ingestion time partitioning in the destination table's name with the syntax my table underscore run underscore date. Tables partitioned on a column. These are partitioned based on either timestamp or date column. Specify the column name in the destination table partitioning field when you set up scheduled query. Let's go back to the Google Cloud Console where we will specify date for destination table partitioning field. Under destination table write preference, select either append to table to append data to the table or overwrite table to overwrite the destination table. We will retain it as append to table. Remember, the destination data set in table for a scheduled query must be in the same project as the scheduled query. Be aware, the data in the destination table is encrypted automatically with the Google Managed Key. However, if you would like to use Customer Managed Encryption Keys or CMEK, then you can choose CMEK in the Advanced Options. In our project, we will use the default encryption. Optionally, you can choose to associate an appropriate service account to your scheduled query under Scheduled Query Credentials. In our project, we will use default option user credentials and leave this field empty. Finally, in the additional configurations, check send email notifications to allow email notifications of transfer run failures. If you want to publish notification messages to PubSub, then specify the PubSub topic. The query has finally been scheduled. Now that the query has been scheduled, it's important to note the following caveats while using scheduled queries. When you create a scheduled query, the time is converted from the specified time zone to UTC. The offset between the specified time zone and UTC can vary, for example, with Daylight Savings Time, DST. Scheduled times are not updated for DST. For example, a scheduled query created in the summer to run daily at noon Pacific Daylight Time will run at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time daily in the winter unless updated. You can address this issue using one of the following ways. Update the scheduled time between the last run before and the first run after the DST change. Create a separate schedule for the BigQuery jobs to be run during the DST period. 
Secondly, when you run scheduled queries in a region which does not match the destination table region, you will get this error. This is because cross-region queries are not supported in BigQuery. To prevent this issue, ensure your scheduled query is run in the same region where the destination table exists. Specify the correct region for running your BigQuery jobs by passing the location global flag. You can also choose your data's location on the console under query settings. For supported region pairs, copy data from the source region to where the transfer will be created. Finally, changing the credentials used in a scheduled query to a service account from a user account is not currently supported in the cloud console. It is helpful to note that you can do this using the following command in Google Cloud CLI by using the flags, update credentials, and service account name. Well, there you have it. In a few minutes, you learned how to schedule and automate BigQuery jobs and considerations to keep in mind while doing so. To learn even more about scheduling BigQuery jobs, check out the following documentation. Thanks for watching.